Hi there, everybody. My name is Kate, and welcome to my channel, Trinergy Awakens Naturally. It's just informal. It's going to be that way for a little while. Um, it's been just a wild few days with downloads just continuing to come, you know, just pounding in. So bear with me. I, I'm, I'm going to get this through to you as best as I'm, I'm getting the clarity for that. Um, I often speak about allowing people to do what they need to do. Just go do you and I do me. And I'm specifically right now addressing the fact that so much religious slash spiritual um, abuse is happening and has happened and that healing through that Part of coming out of the age of Pisces is getting out of that domination through the religious experience, through the awakening of whatever that is for us, um, that experience by healing and bringing light, bringing um, something more than just the domination. This is what you understand of your own sovereignty, your spirituality, your religious understanding. This is what God is to you. This is what, you know, whatever it is that that was called, whether it was God, Brahma, Allah, you know, wh whomever, it does not matter. Whatever that religious structure was um, that defined you, this is how... Um, you're going to do this and now that we're moving into that age of aquarius and finding our sovereignty as spiritual beings we need a way to bring healing to those timelines those bloodlines those religious understandings and those geographical locations that have been particularly hammered um, across the globe so what I got as I was sitting here just pondering that question of why is it so critically important other than the obvious of personal sovereignty is about personal sovereignty. <laughs> However, why is it important to allow people or to understand and give permission, not that I have, you know, some major authorities, but that in my own mind and in teaching other people to have that same, you know, possible, you know, kindness of allowing people to be kind and aware of your own bloodline, your own timeline, and your own religious structure, and your own religious beliefs, that by allowing other people to have that same freedom without battle, that even though I may not understand it, I definitely don't agree with all of them. Um, I don't have to. I just need to respect it because people that are pulling out of some very dark ages um, indoctrination, very heavy understandings of their spiritual selves or their religious selves and what they understand of God, the universe, and, you know, some divine power, um, part of being able to come out of that more authentically and with more sovereignty is by allowing the people who are doing that in the way that they're doing it is to teach that there's nothing wrong with Catholicism in its purest form, with Christianity in its purest form, with anything in its purest form. There's never going to be any harm with that. The harm has come when those systems have been tainted, polluted, uh, perverted, and bastardized by overbearing whatever manipulative message it was um, for the purpose of putting down a particular race or a particular gender or whatever the message is. It really doesn't matter. Wherever it started to go off track with, you know, someone having an agenda, whether it was one person or a group of 12 or, you know, a group of a million, it doesn't matter. When it started going off track and became self-serving and out of balance, that's what I'm talking about, is that there's nothing wrong with Judaism, for instance. There's nothing wrong with, you know, being Baha'i. There's nothing wrong with any system until it becomes oppressive for the individual or for the collective. And it starts with one person and starts getting insidious and polluting and grabbing people and changing and swaying whole entire collectives and populations. That's where it becomes a problem. So wherever it was that it hopped out in history, it doesn't really truly matter. However, I don't have to understand the whole dynamic of each religious um, sect of society or each religious construct. I don't personally as an individual need to understand the whole doctrine or where it started getting you know polluted or tainted i need to have respect for the fact that people that are coming from you know years and years and years generations you know thousands of years some of these um religious structures have been around or hundreds of years however old they are the more that they are bringing people into the dark with that 
and I'm not accusing anyone in particular, every single one of them has been polluted and tainted somehow. It's just that we have some more obvious ones out here, you know, in 3D for us to see. However, every single person um, in a religious paradigm of some kind has been, there's someone somewhere that's hammering down hard in the wrong direction, using it as a tool of abuse and divisiveness. Um, so wherever that's happened, if people are trying to pull out of that, they may need to be to really hang on to their religious understanding and their doctrine in order to heal. And it doesn't mean that they need to lose their whole entire identity as a Catholic, as a Muslim, as a whatever. I'm not the person to decide that. They are. If we have been abused, though, within a religious structure, we may need to really, in order to heal more completely and bring about balance for us, we may need to stick with our Christianity story, our biblical understanding, etc., in order to reach balance. We don't necessarily need to lose the Bible just because we've been abused through the Bible. We need to come to balance with it. And so it's critical that people are allowed to, you know, please understand yourself as a sovereign individual and as a spiritual being. However, if you need to you know, retain the story of Jesus on the cross in order to do that, please do. Just get to that most holistic version of you so that you can accept the teachings however they're coming. If it comes best for you to understand compassion and kindness, forgiveness, loving um, presence, unconditional love, and that, if it helps you to really stay connected to that by understanding the biblical story, then please do. If it does not and it no longer serves you, then please disconnect from that and, you know, find the answer for you. If whatever this faith is, whatever that faith is, if it's Pentecostal message that, you know, gets you there, by all means, you know, I'm not the one that can judge for someone and I'm not the person that needs to decide. The only person that needs to decide is the individual person, each individual person, especially if they've come from a very um, thick and indoctrination into religious doctrine of some kind or theology of some kind and the more oppressive looking ones yeah it's easy to target and say they're bad there's not necessarily something bad about a religion every single religion can be documented as having somebody that's been abusive within the context of that otherwise you wouldn't see religions peeling off into thousands of different expressions of Christianity or whatever. It doesn't matter. Pick one and it's been splintered off because somebody decided they either wanted to abuse it in a new way or they wanted to flee from the old way that was abusive and every one of those splinters off. So you see, wherever it was that one individual or a group of individuals started to see where people were getting their sovereignty, they either wanted to stop it or they wanted to support it um, going in a new direction. And so allowing people to decide for themselves where they are in all of that mess 808 thank you that's really where the progress is happening that's really where sovereignty is happening and that's really where you see awakening happening when we encourage people to yes look at your own doctrine look at your own theology look at what you believe your ideology what is it that you truly inside here if we're spiritual seekers you know what is it that you truly believe inside here outside of your doctrine and within the construct of your doctrine what is that for me personally, I was very fortunate, I guess, that I got scared very early in a Pentecostal experience. It scared the shit right out of me. You know, that, oh, you know, I really resonate with this whole Jesus idea right up until you told me that, you know, I was going to burn in hell because I uh, said something hateful to my sister that I was just, you know, killing her, that I was murdering her. That was the message I got when I was five. And, you know, that didn't make any sense to me that, oh my goodness, this Jesus character seems like a real cool dude. I very much appreciate this. However, this man, you know, this very creepy, scary man, and he was, he was totally creepy before he ever opened his mouth, um, that then went on to prove just how creepy he was that I'm murdering my sister because that morning I just said something quite hateful to her, you know, that I'm sure that I'm going to be burning alive, you know, as soon as I get back on the bus to go back home that, oh my goodness, you know, how do I fix this? And it just never sat right. Fortunately, we were not forced to go to that church experience very often, you know, um, that didn't happen. However, oddly enough, Later on, I went to a Baptist, a Southern Baptist um, 
uh, what do you call that, church camp when I was about 12 and had the most amazing experience with the same Jesus story. It was just told in a very different way. Um, and I had my own religious conversion, if you will. I was saved. I was whatever I was. I went down the, the aisle and said, yeah, I want to know more about this because this feels so really incredibly good to me. I love this experience. This is amazing to me. And so I was saved. And later when I got home, I was told how bad that was. I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. When I was five, like, you sent me to some place where they told me I was murdering this one over here. You know, that what, you know, and then when I'm 12, I willingly go with a friend, you know, ask if I can, can I go to this church experience? Cause this is, this is my friend's going and I really want to go too. Cause it's just so cool. Um, and it was, and then I come home and it's a completely different story because now religion's bad. You know, there was a change of, you know, the mind mindset in the parental structure that, oh yeah, we're no longer attached to, you know, the stepdad whose parents are quite Pentecostal and off the charts and sane with, you know, some belief systems that were quite frightening. Um, but the parent structure changed its mind. Now it's an independent parent that no longer aligns with that. And suddenly Jesus changed and I should change too. And yet there was this, such a great comfort with singing this great music, you know, um, in the Southern Baptist Church. I went to 1111, a Southern Baptist college. I mean, and it wasn't because I'd been indoctrinated. It's just that that was me following the doctrine of me, listening to the theology of me. However, the banging music from that church camp experience really helped to shape the ideas of how I could go back to understanding that Jesus story and the Jesus concept in a very good, positive and wholesome and holistic way that was then followed up in my high school years with wholesome, wonderful music that a lot of it was gospel music and a lot of it was Negro spirituals and stuff that was indoctrinated in a Lutheran and an Episcopalian, you know, because that was what my um, music, my choral conductor, that's what he was teaching and it was about bringing bringing in the idea of this is what sacred context is. That's where I was spoken to. I didn't pick up any of the theology specifically. However, I was picking up the message of this is a biblical context in many different iterations, 12-12. And what really has helped me to recover from those experiences of abuse on a religious um, plane, even through, you know, spirituality, 1221, especially through a spirituality thing where we don't do that religious terrible stuff anymore. Now we do, you know, the enlightened stuff, the awakened stuff. Oh, yeah, then please don't shove me through the same paradigm that we've just dressed it up into a false light <laughs> that I'm still not going to be allowed to do anything except now denounce the religious structure and go into this new spiritual structure that's the religious structure just re-identifying um, itself. It's spinning the same story. So anywhere where we're allowing people to work through their identity, whether they come from a harsh religious background or not, whether they come from a spiritual abuse of some kind, if it's abusing us on any level and taking away our ability to look inside and see our own sovereignty, our own spiritual nature, our own God seed, universal intelligence, whatever we call that, especially if it's not called something religious and especially if it is it's wherever it is that we're no longer allowed to identify with that and empower that that's the point that I want to say hey whatever that is is squishing down and bearing down knuckling down and trying to squash you right there that's the part that I'm saying hey reel against that and be free to identify independently and sovereign in your own sovereignty by asking within here. And if there's a great connection to Jesus, please speak to Jesus a whole bunch. You know, I identify very much with the excuse me, Jesus idea and the concept because it was that feeling of, oh yeah, wow, that's really cool. I really enjoy that. However, it first came through the Pentecostal scare, the crap right out of you kid experience, but it didn't change the fact that I understood. It's just that this man, yeah, he's creepy. And what he's saying about that character, that doesn't align 1414 and it ain't fine. You freaking me out, dude. And he did. And fortunately, like I said, I was just lucky that I wasn't made to go there. If I had been made to go there, it would have ruined the whole Jesus concept because years later, you know, maybe eight, nine years later, when I went to a Baptist church, a nice Baptist, Southern Baptist church, uh, 
camp thing the, over spring break. I went a couple of times and both of them were absolutely banging. You know, that it didn't change my concept and my experience and my connection with that sacred. It was just really polluted and terribly bastardized by somebody trying to tell me what that should be because the Bible says this or that this says that and the new age says this and man it was confusing and very convoluted and was not really helped immensely until I could disconnect immediately from you know please stop telling me how I should be experiencing my holiness and my sacred experience with what I'm connecting to because Jesus is a very you know, honorable and an impeccable warrior. As far as I'm concerned, that's an, an honorable character and a person or entity energy to connect to. However, if somebody had shoved me through that, you know, Pentecostal thing and continued to knuckle down on it, I probably would have lost it because I would have been too terrified or too demonized in my own mind about, I'm, I'm over here murdering my sister. Nah, it's good to let a kid think what they think, which is, yeah, you're creepy and man, I'm going to have to work through the tragedy and the trauma of, ah, oh, you know, I'm, I'm murdering my sister. It finally wore off when she didn't die and neither did I. You know that, okay, I haven't killed her exactly and I'm not going to be hauled away <laughs> to hell just yet. You know, it, it helped to have that not be pounded. But people that are coming out of places where they were, you know, please, we have to allow them to work through that and still be able to hang on to the tradition of their culture, of their religious studies, of whatever it is that was bringing them comfort, you know, whatever it is i listen to um and sing and read the psalms a lot because those really brought me a lot of comfort through high school and when i was singing all of that stuff negro spirituals you know so whatever the construct is that brings people closer to that alignment with the divinement and the assignment there please leave them alone to do that <laughs> and let's stop telling people that they should jump out of judaism or catholicism or you know the southern baptist experience or the christianity or whatever it is you know if it's bringing you closer to your own divinity, please hang on to that and don't let anybody tell you that that experience is bad. If it's not working for you, where it's not working for you, something is trying to oppress you, I can promise you, because that's the game of this, you know, dumb stuff that we've been doing in the old age of Pisces. However, it doesn't mean that we have to lose all of the identity of religion or spirituality. However, we're, you know, hanging and banging that in the closet. We're really harming people by telling them they have to recover from their religious institutions institutions and telling them they have to return to Christianity if they really truly want to get over that new age false prophet stuff, you know, that you have to return to the Christianity thing or we have to go into and jump out of and heal from being Catholic. Oh my God, you know, uh, that's not fair because there are many, many, many beautiful people that are in Catholicism that please allow them to stand there and be there in their um, Catholicism because that's serving them or their Muslimhood or their whatever it is that they are doing that is serving them and is really encouraging them and bringing them into alignment with that frequency. We're not all going to get on the same page of one frequency and call that one thing. We have way too many religions and spiritual practices on the planet that honor the divine. Please allow people to honor the divine in whatever way that they're doing that. If they're truly honoring the divine in themselves and other people, then 1818, whatever they call that, it is divine and it's totally fine. <laughs> so I hope that that's made sense. I hope that's been helpful to you. And wow, you know, just getting it right off the rip. It just, it's not stopped. There's a lot of downloads right now and a whole lot of information happening in a major, whoo, you know, download right now that's happening and, and causing some sweating and some, <laughs> Oh, yeah, a major heat experience. So um, I'm going to take my, my heat wave and my menopausal instant, you know, menopause thing um, and go on. However, that's one download that came. And I hope, as I said, that you're doing well no matter what part of the day you're in. And remember, get within your skin because you're divine. It's totally fine, whatever you call that, however you enrich that, however you honor that, however you ritualize it, if that's what you do. Please continue to do what serves you and what serves your divinity the best and allows you to be the most loving and understanding and compassionate with other people as they do the exact same thing. Take care of yourselves and get within because you're divine. Totally fine. And I will see you again next time. Goodbye, friends.